I truly appreciate all of the advice, concern, and positivity that you all have sent my way. I realize that it's been almost a month since I posted about my experience, and I've had many people reach out to me kindly checking in and wanting to know how I'm doing. Unfortunately, this situation has gone from horrific to unbelievably evil. There isn't a word I can think of that does it justice. I apologize in advance for what I know is going to be a long update post, but it's the only way to get the full picture of how truly destroyed I feel. Days after the initial post, I took your guy's advice and made a few appointments with attorneys and one with a legal document preparation lady to keep my options open. My wife had no knowledge of those meetings FYI. We went a few days after the post with no contact directly but she was adamant that this time she really was going to make an effort to get us to in to see a marriage therapist which I had been insisting upon for months before my DDAY. So we can try to see if there was any way of working through this, but I knew in my heart what my choice would inevitably be. She did succeed in getting us onto a therapist's schedule, but it was going to be about a week and a half until we could get in. During that time I was literally stalking her every move from that damned iPad. I was obsessing over it, watching every message come and go, checking Facebook, Snapchat, everything I possibly could. After a week and a half of scrutinizing every move she made digitally, I really had no further evidence, and I thought perhaps she was showing true remorse. When it finally came time to see the therapist, he sat us down, asked us why we were there and I told her to tell him the story in her own words. She left out some of the details, but most of it was there, out on the table. The therapist turns his head to me after hearing it all and asks me how does that make you feel about your trust in her. How does it make you feel about your marriage? I just shook my head in disbelief and shock. And instead of answering his question, I replied, if I don't say it out loud right now, I'm afraid I never will. There's no coming back from this for me. The marriage, this marriage is over. The vows were broken. My trust is shattered. And I think the only thing left to do is to get a divorce. My gut wrenched, and she completely blew up into hysterical crying. I continued, I don't know what can be salvaged from this relationship but the marriage is over. I meant what I said on the altar. And I'm not being true to myself if I don't recognize this as being broken. Unfixable. At that point, I felt a slight sense of relief, having stated it out loud, in front of her, and a neutral party, that I was done. The remainder of the therapist appointment was spent on him explaining to her why my feelings and my decision were completely rational given the situation, and calming her down. It actually couldn't have gone better in my opinion. He insisted upon seeing us not as a couple, but separately, to see if he could help us as individuals first, and maybe on the horizon, perhaps years from now, bring us together for discussion of reconciliation. I'll say it right now so you don't have to worry at this point I don't have even the slightest intention of ever considering reconciliation, but at least in the meantime, the individual therapy might actually do me some good. Now, before I continue, I knew at this point I was about to embark upon a legal journey which if not amicable, could be disgustingly ugly and financially devastating to me, the breadwinner in a no-fault state. I've written all of this legal process out, but I'm omitting until things are locked in. Too risky to post online at the moment the overarching point of the legal process is that I have to keep things amicable right now. Let's fast forward roughly a week and a half. By now, we've both had at least one individual therapy session each and her narrative to her entire family is that we're ending the marriage because of the breaking of vows. But we're both trying to heal ourselves right now. She's still staying with family, and I continue my obsession with constantly searching her digital presence for any sign that she was continuing her disgusting habits as many of you had suggested she would. Not saying it's your fault, I would have been searching anyway. It wasn't until one night last week that I realized there was a place I hadn't checked ever checked the app store. I went to the app download history of the iCloud account and saw that almost two weeks prior to that evening, she had downloaded a secret texting app onto her phone. My gut wrenched. I realized in one foul swoop that this entire time, she's gone out of her way to hide some sort of messaging from me. Knowing I had her iPad which she insisted upon me keeping so I can begin to trust her again, but I really think to this day that she didn't realize that an app downloaded on one iCloud device can be seen in the history from any iCloud connected device. I needed to know what the communications were within that app. I wasn't even in control of my body thinking back to those moments. I downloaded the app onto her iPad, tried a few of her most common login combos, and Viola. The truth, she not only had been messaging Buddy on this app since after our first therapy appointment together, but they had been continuing to have sex with one another. 
during times in which she knew I'd be out of the area. I puked. I cried. It was 3 in the morning on a week night. I went into the restroom and started grabbing all the prescription strength medications I could find. I went back into my room with an overflowing handful of assorted pills that without a doubt would have been effective in ending my life. I sat on the edge of my bed, sobbing, ready to end it. I picked up my phone and tried to call my mom. No answer. My dad. No answer. My sister. She answered. I told her what I had just discovered, through violent outbursts of tears, and she could tell I was on the verge of losing it. She didn't know I had the pills in my hand, but she did insist keeping me on the phone, albeit in the middle of the night, until I had calmed down. It took about an hour but I was finally numb again and after hanging up the phone, I went back into the bathroom and poured the pills back into one of the bottles. Washed my hands, then returned to bed to try to get at least a couple of hours of sleep that never came. As hours passed, I realized that I needed to go to work. I couldn't stand to be in that house, or that moment any longer. As I got dressed, I threw the bottle of pills into my briefcase along with the iPad, both of which, upon arrival to my office, I promptly gave to my most trusted coworker and asked him to lock up in his desk and not return them to me no matter what. No questions asked. He obliged and gave me an understanding pat on the shoulder as I walked away. So now I've done it. I got what I was asking for, what I had been searching for, undeniable proof that not only is my wife a cheater, but she's also a cold-blooded liar. I struggled for days on end, trying to decide what to do with the information I had discovered. On one hand, I wanted so badly to call her out to every possible family member friend, or acquaintance and let the whole world know what she truly is, what she had done and was continuing to do, but I couldn't. I already have the process underway for ending the marriage, but there's still a time window where she could choose to get nasty and costly. As days went by, and more and more texts, calls, and attempts to communicate with me went unanswered, she finally went out of her way to stop by and check on me. I about lost my shit. During the encounter, I was purposefully very vague and seemingly indifferent to her. I didn't know exactly what to do. It wasn't until she lost her temper and started yelling at me for acting weird that I gave her a chance and asked her point blank, have you had any contact with Buddy whatsoever since that night her response? No, I blocked him on everything. I asked again, are you sure about that? She adamantly proclaimed that she hadn't, and that he was gross and she would never do that to me. She could never do that to me. Then I dropped the bomb. So what about this app? And what about this video I took on my phone of that app, showing the conversations you two have been having this whole time? The pictures you've sent one another, the plans you've made to sneak around based on my daily schedule. She collapsed onto the ground, sobbing, crying, begging me for what I don't know. I kept my tone indifferent, so here's what's going to happen. I'm not going to tell anyone about this. And in exchange, you're not going to fight me at all about anything in the divorce process. I'm going to be fair, even though I shouldn't have to be but you're going to be served with the divorce papers and then do nothing with them. Otherwise, people will have to know about this situation and why it is that I'm being so unreasonable. Your choice. She left, and two days later, she was served. Since that day, I've kept my word and haven't told anyone outside of my immediate family members. But I know for a fact find my iPhone she has visited him every single night since then at the house where he lives with his mother. Her family thinks she's going to Alcoholics Anonymous meetings every single night, but my screenshots of her location during the meetings prove otherwise. Seriously, why the FFF hasn't she changed her iCloud PW? I don't know why I keep compiling the evidence, but I do. I struggle right now with the anxiety of waiting for this period of time to pass until her right to fight me in court has passed, all the while. Knowing her family thinks she's on the right path when that couldn't be further from the truth, in fact, she's lying to every single one of them. What hurts me the most right now is the injustice of it all. She gets to be around people her family and act like everything is on the up and up every day and run off each night to have sex with him then sneak home in the middle of the night to keep up appearances. All the while, I go to work each day, head home to an empty, mentally haunting house and experience how it truly feels to be alone in every sense of the word. I'm past the feelings of ever considering self-harm. But these are dark days nonetheless. I'm taking everything hour by hour, day by day until the day comes that the I have the reassurance of knowing I'll make it out of this hell without my finances being destroyed and officially able to completely leave her in the dust. What I'll do from there, I truly do not yet know. I'm just trying to survive until that moment comes. Thank you all for reading and for your concern, advice, wisdom, and the courage you've given me.
My one outlet in a time of nothing but feeling completely shut out by the world. I may not know a single thing about you, but I trust you more than I trust my wife without a shadow of a doubt. Thank you.